great to be in the house of the Lord. Thankful for his presence that I feel here already. Uh, no greater feeling than to be in church and feel the presence of the Lord. I'm thankful for that. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to preach tonight because uh, I feel like God's presence is already here. If we'll just obey God tonight, if we'll just let go and let God, if we'll just worship Him, if we'll just uh, let Him have His way, whatever it is that you feel like doing, I ask you to obey God tonight. If it's uh, stand up and amen and clap your hands, if it's run around the church, uh, whatever it may be, if you'll just obey God tonight, I believe that God is going to do something great. I believe that that was just a, a sense just to let Him let us know that His presence presence is here and if all we need to do is when we come into the house of the Lord and his presence is here we have his undivided attention he didn't just come just to come but he came because he knew there was a need here tonight and if you'll just step out in faith and believe that God will heal you and God will touch you and God will move God will do great things but you got to be willing to move when God moves if you have your Bibles turn to first Kings chapter 19 a uh, very familiar scripture scripture in the Bible. Uh, no doubt some of you preachers may have preached it many times in many different ways. Myself, I have preached a message from this text before, but I feel like with everything that's gone on in the world and everything that's happened uh, in the world right now, uh, it's a strange time with uh, COVID and the elections, and I don't know about you, but uh, and I, I hope none of you fall out with me, but uh, there was a time that I was a little discouraged with the way the election went, and I didn't know what was going on. And I didn't know what was happening. And I said, Lord, this has got to be the end of the world. Lord, you must be fixing to come back at any time. But I found great uh, hope in this scripture that came out uh, in the story of this Bible. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 19. It says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Without all, he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me. Morse also, if thou make thy life as thy own one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life that came Bathsheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left the servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die. And it said, It is enough, O now, Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And also he lay and slept under a juniper tree. Behold, then an angel touched him, and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake bait on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and did drink. And when he went to the strength of that meat, forty days and forty nights under Orb, the mount of God. We find Elijah in a situation where everything was unfolding before him. Everything seemed to be crumbling around him. And he got discouraged about the things that was going on. And he thought that it was over. He thought that he had no hope. He thought that um, everything was over with. But and he laid under that juniper tree wanting to die. You know, when I read that scripture, it made me think of something. It made me think, you know, even good people go through things sometimes. Even ministers of God go through things at times. Elijah, one of the greatest prophets in the Bible, he had a discouraging moment. You know, a lot of times uh, we think that uh, preachers or ministers or pastors or people in the church can't go through something. Uh, and we find ourselves uh, feeling doubtful uh, when we come against situations in our life. But even Elijah went through a certain time in his life where he didn't understand what was going on in the world. He thought that he had no other hope. He thought there was nobody else like him. Wouldn't you think that here in 2021 that the church feels the same way? <laughs> Don't you feel like with the elections and everything that's going on that we're all alone, that we have no help, that, we're, that God 
God is the only thing that can help us now. You know, many times that we've turned our way and went in a separate direction, and we thought that the COVID was going to bring people in back to the house of God, and we thought that different things would open up people's eyes, but it's made people look worse and worse. We don't think that things are ever going to get better, and we laid under that juniper tree, but God said, I have a different plan. He said he laid corn bread, and he had water, and he said, arise and eat, arise and eat. That Holy Ghost is coming to the services time after time again, saying, arise and eat. The journey's too great. It's not over with yet. Things might be getting out of hand, but God did promise revival in the last days. He said that he was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. He said that his sons and daughters shall prophesy. I believe we're living in these last days. I'm looking for revival. But because I'm looking for that old-fashioned revival, I'm looking for God to come back. I'm looking for the Holy Ghost to move like never before. That Holy Ghost has came time and time again to revive the church, to wake the church up. He's giving food to the church, saying, Arise and eat. Arise and eat. If you'll just get up and arise and eat. If you'll just let that Holy Ghost move. If you'll just let that Holy Ghost burn inside of you. Arise and eat. It's not over. There's work to be done. Didn't he say that he was going to have a glorious church without spot and wrinkle? He didn't say he was coming back after a quarantine church. He didn't say he was coming back after a dead church. But he said he's going to come back after a glorious church. He's not going to come back for a church that was less than what he came we left with. In Acts chapter 2, there was a great revival happen. We're not going to have anything less than that. He, when he comes back, he's going to have a bride. He's not going to have... As uh, most preachers would say, I've heard preach over the time of life. I've heard them say he's not coming back after a girlfriend. He's coming back after a bride. Somebody that's faithful. Somebody that's been there, tried and true. Somebody that's been there through the ups and downs. Somebody that's been there without cease that will love him no matter what happens. That's what a bride is. A girlfriend may leave you when she don't like what's going on, but a bride's going to stick by your side no matter what. And that's what he's coming back for. A bride. He's coming back after a bride. B.H. Clendenin said that the elect of God, which is me and you, must know that the work of God is going to go through. No matter how dark it may seem, God will have a church, and it will be a glorious church. God is going to have a great church. He's going to have revival, and I believe that we can get that revival if we'll just press in, if we'll just pray through, if we'll just get a hold of God like never before. We'll see a move of God like we've never seen before. I've seen outreach in communities. I used to see uh, a lot of door knocking and flyers. I used to see a lot of witnessing. I used to see a lot of people drawing people to church, saying in the supermarkets and go to Walmart, saying, ain't God good? We're having church this week. Why don't you come be with us? I don't see much of that going on no more. Why? Because they're ashamed. I tell you, we need to get back that fire to where we're inviting the lost. Because if we don't have the love for the lost, the love of God is not in us. We should be reaching people. We should be calling out to people. We should be calling people in our families that don't go to church and invite them to church. We can say what we want to about the church, but it's our own fault. The reason that we're in the shape we're in now is because of us. The church can't fill up just to fill up. We've got to be the hands and feet of God. We've got to reach the lost. We've got to reach them. I know it's a cliche, but we've got to reach the lost at any cost. We've got to get back to this altar in prayer. We've got to pray like we never played before. There's a time that uh, 
we would not go without a prayer and a prayer meeting. God is going to meet us in that prayer meeting. He meets you every time at that altar. That fire will always burn upon that altar, and it will never burn on an empty altar. you got to make your life a life of prayer. If you want to see God move, you're going to have to get a hold of God. You're going to have to ask God. You're going to have to beg God for revival. And then you've got to deal with whatever it is that God deals with you in that prayer. In that altar, if God tells you to lay something down, you got to lay it down. If he tells you you got to get up and do something, you got to get up and do it. But you got to pray. But you got to listen. Whatever it is that God is telling you in prayer, you might be the one holding keys to revival for this church. But you got to be willing to pray and wait on the Lord. Patience is missing today in the church. Nobody wants to wait on the Lord. Nobody wants to wait for an answer on God. They want to make their own decisions, then ask for forgiveness later when it didn't work out. That's not what that is. That's not how it works. We got to be patient and pray for the will of God and wait for the will of God to happen. We need that fire to burn like it's never burned before. I want to burn like I've never burned for God before. I want this Holy Ghost to get a hold of me like I've never had it before. I want to change. I want to change. I'm not too proud to say there's things in my life and in my heart that I want change. I want God to change me from the inside out. I want to love people like I've never loved people before. I want to lay hands on the sick and they be recovered. I want to be I want to be that one that God uses and you can be that one that God uses if you'll just allow God to move inside of you if you'll get up when the singing is happening and throw your hands up and worship God you'll feel a presence change I felt a lot of things change when we stood up and started raising our hands it seems like the whole atmosphere of this church completely changed that's what happens during worship it's easy sometimes just to stand there and clap your hands but when you throw your hands up and you worship God and you say God I thank you for everything Thank you, done. Things start happening. The presence of God changes people. The presence of God takes what we can't fix and what we can't see and make it right. Amen. If we'll just let God have his way, if we'll just let him move, if we'll just obey him, I know there's times that we get maybe a little shy. Believe it or not, I'm really shy. I don't know if most people know that, but I I can't sing a lick. I wish I could. If I could sing, I'd be probably one of them singing preachers. I'd be singing while I'm preaching. But that doesn't stop me from trying. I'll try. I'll sing. I feel like I owe it to God. I feel like I should offer up my praises unto Him. I don't want the rocks to cry out for me. I don't want the rocks to cry out for me. Once the rocks start crying out, then I know that I have failed God. That's what we're here for. We were made to worship. We were made to praise Him. You know, sometimes life gets a little difficult and a little hard, and sometimes we don't know what's going to happen. But I've seen people praise their way out of circumstances. I've seen praise change people. I've seen a a, a song come into a a service and everything just turned completely around in that whole service. I've seen people come in one way and leave a different way because they were in the presence of God because they felt something in their heart when they started releasing that worship unto God and releasing that prayer and saying, Lord, I need you like I've never needed you before. If I could tell you anything, I'm not a, I'm not one of the smartest men. I'm not one of the wisest men. But if I could tell you anything I've learned over the years, you got to pray like you've never prayed before. You got to keep that fire burning on that altar, but you got to praise him just as much as you pray. You got to worship him. You got to, you got to get up and you got to move when God is moving. Brother Collins taught me as a young preacher, hey, 
He said, you got to get them up. You got to get them moving. Because once the Spirit starts moving and they're up and they're starting to move, the Holy Ghost just starts taking over and people are getting out of their comfort zone. They're starting to leave things because they're up and moving. We need God to move in this church. You don't understand what critical times that we live in right now, that we need revival now, that we've never needed it before. We just need to get a hold of God. We need to worship him, his spirit and his truth. I believe this is a good church and good people. And y'all have grown leaps and bounds since the first time I was here. There's a lot of new faces and a lot of new people. But couldn't you use a few more? Huh. Couldn't you use a few more? I've seen people in here. I see families in here. That there's people with them that wasn't with them last time. Somebody was praying. Nothing more greater than have somebody in your family pray for you. I wouldn't be here today if my grandmother and grandfather didn't pray for me. When I was little, they would take me to church. When I was real little, they would slide me under the pew so I didn't get stepped on during the service. And I would sleep there. But it didn't take long when the Holy Ghost were moving for me to get up out underneath that pew and find out what was going on. Even when I wasn't doing right, they prayed for me, cried out my name. Because of their prayers, I'm here today. Wouldn't you love to see somebody in your family here? There's people that's lost and undone without God. Wouldn't you love to see them here? You can't wish it to happen. You got to pray for it. We got to push that plate back. We got to fast. We got to ask God to move. I want to see revival come one more time. I want to see people walk through those doors that we thought would never walk through these doors. I want to see Brother Collins. I've heard... Uh, Preachers, or old time preachers would tell us that there were people come in drunk, crying, running out of that altar. Give their hearts and lives to Jesus Christ and wake up sober. Amen. I want to see that. I want to see God's presence. I want to feel that convicting power once again. If we'll just pray for Nocatee, if we'll just pray for Arcadia, if we'll just pray for Fort Ogden, there's no telling what you're liable to see. see hearts and lives changed. I know most of you know this church and have heard the story. I know it was at a different location. The old church was at a different location at one time. And I'm not exactly sure, brother, where it was at or how close it was to here. It was right here. But I heard a story one time that the Holy Ghost was moving so strongly that there was a fire sitting over the church that the fire department came. <laughs> the fire department came. There might have been a fire above the church, but there was nothing. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to see that again? <laughs> see, I believe we might not be able to see it in the natural, but I believe we can see it in the spiritual. We might not see it in the natural. It may not be God's will for us to see it again in the natural, 
But every time that his presence is here, there's a fire sitting over the top of the church. And that fire purges, it burns, it helps, it heals. That fire's got to burn again. It's got to burn again. He prophesied, Joel did, in the last days that he was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. That fire has got to burn again. But that church has got to be ready for that fire to burn. That church has got to be a sacrifice. It's got to do everything it can for that fire to burn. Because that Bible also says there's going to be a great falling away in that last day. There's going to be two groups. The falling away and those are in the revival. Choose this day which one you want to be in. Mm. Yes, Lord. Every way, Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Make your election sure this day. Make your election sure this day. Praise he says that he'll spew the lukewarm out. He said, I rave in autumn. I want to be on fire for God. For God to pour out his spirit. He needs dedication. Sanctification. And I made up mine. I don't think it was by accident that those songs were saying today. My foot is on the rock. I feel like running my last mile. We're in that last mile. I don't want to be stuck in the same place. <laughs> but I want to run. I want to run. I want to run my last mile home. I see the finish line just in sight. I don't want to turn back now. I don't want to go another way. But I want to run towards it. Amen. 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 Come on. Because the man that put his hand to the plow and looked back is not fit for the kingdom of God. That's what it says. Come on. Go forward. Go forward. If you're different today than you were yesterday, you backslid. Move forward in God. Run this race. Finish your course. Choose this day. Choose this day to be in which group? I want that fire to burn. I want Pentecost to happen. I want to experience what they experienced in Acts chapter 2. Pastor Lottie, I know you do. The hardest thing to do is to lead a church. Brother Collins can tell you, I'm not sure if there's any other pastors here, but they can tell you there's a burden for everyone that sits in this church. There's a burden that they cry at night asking God to heal, asking God to touch, asking God to revive. Make it easier on them. If I asked your pastor how many nights did he lay awake crying out your name, he probably couldn't tell me how many times he's done it. Make it easier on him. Make up your mind. 
choose this day who you're going to serve. Keep your eyes on God and not on this world or the things of this world. Love not the world or the things that are in it. That's what the Bible says. Keep your eyes on God. I feel like we're so close. So close to revival. Yes, on the edge. On the edge. I believe God could just breathe one time of... And He would tip us right into it. Pastor, would you come with me?